Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys with PremierGuitar.com. I'm hanging out with Mike from Incubus. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. How about you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us and being so gracious with your time today. Can you talk to me about your guitar that you have over there, your main one that you're using currently? This is a Music Man Albert Lee model that uh, I picked up. I started playing these about a year and a half ago. Funny how I kind of came across these guitars. Ben, actually the bass player of our band, he, he'd been playing these for a while and he'd always leave it around the dressing room. And I had a really big problem finding a guitar that was comfortable for me to play on tour. Like when I'm at home, I actually spend most of my time playing, um, like I got this Jazz Master, the 65 Jazz Fender Jazz Master that I love. Um, I've got a Tele that, that is awesome that I love. I mean, I have, you know, kind of a few guitars that I really that I really kind of stick to when I'm recording or when I'm at home but for touring which is what we do most of the time we're out on the road playing shows um, you know I had carpal tunnel syndrome and I had to have a surgery on my wrist I've got this really awesome scar right here someone suggested at one time that I get a zipper tattooed on it which would be kind of cool but I'm not gonna do that because I don't have any tattoos I'm the last guy in a band who doesn't have a tattoo I actually you know I went through a lot of different guitars. I was playing, you know, different Fenders, different Gibsons, um, you know, SGs, uh, Telecasters, um, Strats, just to try and find something that that can, could kind of be comfortable for me, I guess, across the different, um, like, sort of stuff that I do when, I, when we play, because, you know, we have so many records, and yeah, we have a lot of different sounds, and it'd be, it's really hard for me to find something that kind of works for everything, but I, I need to find something that works for everything just because my, my wrist is really sensitive, and I have to be really careful how I play because of my the injury to my wrist. So I kind of accidentally discovered that this is a really, really comfortable guitar to play. So if anybody out there is having a, 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 an issue, you know, with, the, with playing, I mean, if I stayed home and I were just playing at home and writing and recording, this wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem. But if you gotta play every single night for, you know, long periods of time, this is a really, a really nice guitar for that because, well, for many reasons, it's really well balanced. The, I really love the, the neck. It's kind of like this unfin unfinished rosewood um, neck that I just I really dig. I just like the way it feels. I, I don't you know it's just a just sort of a personal thing. I really dig the the way it's, it's very it's unfinished feeling. You know it's just it's just uh, it's nice. You know a lot of necks are like there's a lot of lacquer on the back and it feels like I don't know. There's something I like about feeling the wood. You know against my against my hand when I'm playing um, and. Uh, it's just a, like the, the frets are really nice. The craftsmanship is really good. Um, it stays very well in tune. That's another big problem, you know, that I've always <laughs> always had with a lot of guitars, um, you know, locking tuners and and uh, they're just really well made. They're, it's a really it's a really good guitar. And um, so just generally speaking, for all the different stuff that I do, it kind of takes care of everything in a very very good way. And yeah. currently that on the road at Grady or Tech Show, that's like your whole boat is just yeah. all these same models then, right? Yeah, I have to I have to keep it really consistent again because of my the condition of my wrists. You know, otherwise I'd be switching around and I'd be playing, you know, a telly in this song and I'd be playing a you know strat over here on this song and that's what I and I'd love to be able to do that, I just can't, you know, like it's too taxing on my on my wrist. It's much better for me to keep everything consistent. What about, what about string gauge w with regards to your wrist and your injury and yourself? What about that? Well, actually, string gauge was how I injured my wrist to begin with. Really? It took me kind of a little while to figure out how I had damaged my wrist so badly, but the way that happened was in the days, uh, the early days of touring, um, I would break strings a lot. And so I kept playing heavier strings until I stopped breaking them. <laughs> and I got all the way up to 13s. Wow. And I didn't have a guitar tech. I actually didn't even have a backup guitar at first, back in like 1997, 96, 97 when we first started touring. I didn't even have a, a backup guitar. So if I broke a string, that meant I had to stop playing and like restring the yeah. guitar during the song, <laughs> or we had to stop and I had to just, you know, wait a minute and put another one on or whatever. And it was such a pain in the ass. So I kept getting heavier strings until I stopped breaking them. And I ended up with like 13. I did that for a long time. And then when, then when we were lucky enough to have some success and I was able to get a, a you know, a tech and some backups and all that, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, um, I got so accustomed to playing such heavy strings that anytime I'd play anybody's guitar that had lighter strings on it, I felt like, it felt like a toy to me. Yeah. Like it just felt like I was playing a bunch of rubber bands. So I got used to those heavy strings, but then I just, 
I just kept using them for a really long time and I, I kind of at certain points was like maybe I should lighten these up because I started getting I started feeling pain in my wrists about uh, 2000 2001 or two during our morning view era album just kind of gradually got worse and then it got to a certain point around 2000 four five something like that where i just couldn't even play anymore wow so that was that was a big problem for me so now i'm just playing nines and and you know they're pretty light and i have to play much more lightly too i have to be careful you know it's like yeah. i'm 36 we started touring when we were 18 so it's <laughs> like you know we've been doing it for a long time and and uh it's awesome you know 18 years of abusing my wrist though <laughs> What picks are you currently using and prefer? I've been using these little these little Tortex picks for a long time. See? It says Incubus right there. It says my name, Michael. <laughs> I've I've I haven't changed this in, you know, like twelve years or something like that. I've been using these forever. I just like these small picks. I've always so liked them. Small. They're i I guess I just kinda have small hands and I like I, I just like feeling close to the string, I guess. because okay. um, I use my f I use when I'm picking I use my fingers um, on my on my right hand I use my fingers a lot like w like the, with the way that I pick like a lot of times it's kind of like combination of fingers and pick that's hitting the strings you know so um, you know and and I just I don't know I just I always felt like whenever I had a larger pick in my hand it just felt like it was getting in the way of something I was trying to do you know even like strumming like an acoustic or whatever like I still just use these. Grady Show is the unusual instrument that I can honestly say I've never seen any other guitar tech or guitar boat on any of these rig rundowns. Can you talk to us about that instrument? What the pipa? Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a Chinese four string lute. Um, I don't know how to play it like sort of the the traditional way that it's yeah. played. I've actually I've actually been told that it's traditionally played by women with finger picks. It's like a um, and they, I think they play very fast, like the tremolo style picking. Okay. Picking, um, they play with their fingers, and um, and I just picked it up though and started playing. It was actually a gift um, from Steve Vai. He Aww. gave that to me a long time ago. He's a hero of mine, and I've always, you know, loved Steve's music. And you know, he he introduced me to like Zappa and yeah. you know, sort of a whole different world of music that I didn't know in my early teens. Lucky enough to be able to to play with Steve a bunch of times. And one time he. Uh, I saw the instrument at his house sitting there, and I was like, "What is that?" And he was like, "He was like, I don't know, just take it, play with it." And I was like, "I was like, really?" And he was like, "Just promise me that you'll write something with it. You know, promise me you'll make something cool with it, and you can have it." And so I was like, "All right, cool." You know, it was kind of like a little challenge. Yeah. He gave me, his, you know, homework from Steve Vai. You know, <laughs> and uh, so I took it home and at the time we were making the album Morning View and um, and I wrote um, a song called Aqueous Transmission. I just took the the that instrument, it's called the peep, I just took it back to the house and that was literally the first thing that came out of me when I sat down and started playing with it. How do you play it? I just play it more, I played it like I would play a guitar. Oh. I just kind of sat it up, it's like this big teardrop shaped thing and I just kind of sit it up like this and just play it like that. You know, I don't think it's meant, I mean, I, th I think they do play it like that, but they sort of, I think they pick it like that, or they could possibly play it like that. I should know these things, shouldn't I? I think that's part of the, you know, real beauty of, of just music making in general is, is finding a way to make something um, out of, you know, just out of pure intuition, you know, like without, I didn't know anything about the instrument. I just thought, well, here's how I would play it, you know. I would encourage other people to do the same. <laughs> pick up an, an, pick, pick up any object, any inanimate object, or an animate object if you'd like, and try and make, <laughs> make music with it <laughs> in any way that seems fit. <laughs> the rest of your guitars are most they're mostly in tune with E, right? And then you have a few that are in drop D or is it just D? I've got I've got one set uh one that's drop D, just drop D. Um and then I've got a couple that are that have different capo setting. Oh, okay. Like I've got a capo on them. Drop D. We have a song called Echo, a song called Circles, Blood on the Ground, Orophobia. Not too many, you know, but every once in a while, uh, you know, every once in a while it's nice to, you know, get that little, you know, open yeah. thing going on. Yeah, the capo on the second fret is uh, is a song called uh, If Not Now When. And then uh, I've also got a capo on the first fret, Isidore. A lot of times if I'm playing, you know, in regular standard tuning or whatever, 
um, I'll, I'll just write a song that way and then and then it you know we'll mess around with that in the studio if, it, if the key doesn't work well for Brandon's vocal range you know we'll start messing around with it and try different keys and stuff and then moving along to your amp and duly noted that you've used Marshalls and Fenders in the past uh -huh. and you're back to the Mesa Boogies yeah. and uh, what do you like so much about the Mesa Boogies that you've returned I guess so to speak home you've, you're back with them yeah. I just like those smaller amps they're real tight sounding they they're re very responsive and like I said it, for being on the road it's kind of like for me like what does the best job of kind of handling everything and those amps are really really versatile like I said ideally before like I'd be cool to have like different things you know different songs different amps and stuff but it's a really good uh, sort of in between that kind of can take care of everything and that way um, it doesn't matter like how much we change the set lists around doesn't matter what songs we're playing I know it's gonna work the settings similar on both sides or how's that how they set up I've got them set up um, based kind of in a basic clean dirty format the, the the sound that I have that's sort of I guess clean is not really very clean though it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty muddy and then the overdriven sound um, I, I have a lot of control though over how overdriven it is sometimes I have it really cranked up I've also got a compressor that I'd kind of kick in and out at times when I want more you know when I need it to to um, to have you know more sustain and stuff like that I'll, I'll kick this compressor on um, and same with the clean channel as well I've actually got like a an overdrive like a tone driver pedal that I that I that I adjust a lot during the show depending on the song okay. and it's not sitting out in front of you so it's kind of hard to remember but if you could walk us through some of, if, if you can tell us about some of the pedals you're using or all of them if you can people love to know that I've been looking down at that thing for so many years I, I know the order that every single pedal is in and where it is exactly so I've got a memory man at the beginning of the chain which is really great for a lot of things actually the delay part of it is obviously like really awesome I mean um, you've got tremendous uh, control over you know the the different properties of the delay um, and also when you speed it up and slow it down manually it, you get all kinds of really all the really cool stuff starts happening but also um, and this is a trick that uh, that Brendan O'Brien producer that we worked with for a long time um, you can control the the gain there's like a you know there's an input um, knob and if you you know it's really good for like kind of if you want a little bit more, if you want the amp to break up a little more, or you want to clean it up a little bit, to, you know, the input on that's really good for turning up and down. Okay. Um, it's like it's not really used for that a lot, you know, from what I understand. But it's it's a really good overdrive if you if you uh, crank it. It's like a really it, it's not used as an overdrive pedal, but you know, like I've done that a lot in the studio <laughs> actually. I've got a a pedal called the Dan Electro Real Echo. It's probably my favorite pedal. I've been using it for a real long time and I've actually never seen it anywhere other than my rig. I've never seen yeah. anybody play one. I, I don't even like that Dan Electro sent that to me along with another pedal that I really love that I just don't have in my rig because it's kind of, it's a it's a spring reverb and it, if you even like touch it, it just freaks out. And <laughs> So I can't have it in the rig, but I love it. It's a great pedal. The Real Echo is awesome because it controls the rate of the delay but without messing with the pitch okay. so it's kind of like you know all the people all these people are making dubstep now it's like this big thing everybody's doing dubstep stuff it's kind of like instant dubstep music dubstep without you know without having to f with computers you know <laughs> and it's I've been messing with it for a long like we have a song called uh, Pistola that came yeah. out in uh, our album Curl After the Murder the guitar solo on that is all kind of whacked out with that effect okay. so that's the only pedal I've seen that does that the way that, at least the way that that does it, and it's got this other cool filter that you can increase or decrease, and it kind of dubs the sound out and, you know, makes it really a analog filter, you know, section. That You're not afraid to get down and, like, play with the pedals during uh, sets like that? Yeah, I do it all the time. Like, it's, I spend half my time down, like, on the ground <laughs> messing around. Why well, I like having all those pedals, I like having access to it. Like, you know, Ben, our bass player, has been trying to get me, like, forever. Get these, like, rack units and stuff. And he's all into the fractal. I like being able to touch it. If something doesn't sound right to me, I, like, can do something about it, you know? But maybe it's, maybe I'm just a stubborn old, like, purist or something. Next is a, a Crybaby wah-wah pedal, which I don't have to say anything about because it it's just awesome. I've also got a Hughes and Kettner Rotosphere, yeah. which is like a Leslie simulator. Thing's awesome. Love it. Um, like, we have a song called The Warmth where the main sort of sound. I was gonna ask you about that. That was a song that I, I've always listened to for so long. And I'm just like, if I ever get the chance to ask Mike, I'd just oh, love right. to hear like, yeah, because that opening arpeggio riff and we're just like yeah. waffles into this. 
Yeah, yeah I actually recorded that um, with that pedal. You know, like I was planning to. I remember going to the studio and use a real Leslie to do it, but things just sounded awesome, so we used it. Yeah. Kept it, and uh, so that's been in the rig ever since I wrote that song. A couple of Boss Super Phasers. Okay. Um, I've just got them both set differently. There's two of them. How are they set up? One of them is set at kind of, they have, there's, a, there's a position one setting and a position two setting. One of them is like very clearly a phaser. The other setting almost sounds more like a, like it's like a more extreme phase. It almost sounds like a flange in a certain way. It's like, it's, it's just a different type of phase. And um, I have one set at kind of like a mid-range speed and depth and I've got the other one set really slow almost like if you were to take a wah-wah pedal and open it and close it really slowly it's the way that the other one sounds so I've got those set differently and sometimes I mess with the ri with the settings on those during the show too like and I, I do that a lot gonculator it's a ring modulator that was made by DOD it's just a ring modulator that that really dirties up the sound. I use it on songs like Glass. We have a song called Glass from Science. And a lot of the earlier stuff, a lot of the, I used it a lot on Science. From there, I've got a Boss Digital Delay slash Reverb, probably the most important pedal for me if I had to choose like one pedal Why that I'd that? need. Just because a lot of this, I use a lot of delays. I'm always having to adjust to the tempo of this song. So I've got all these like little marks, you know, where I'm like, gotta line it up. <laughs> But it works really well, and the reason why that pedal, I've never been able to, to people always ask me, like, why don't you just program the delays in so they're always the same rate, and I've actually never really found a delay, though, that when you turn it off, it, it keeps going. Like, it'll decay away as the, it normally would. Most other pedals I've ever seen, like, the delay just stops. So that's the reason why I always use that one, because because right. it'll you know if I have to switch sounds, it kind of gives it gives it it's like a cushion, you know, <laughs> like you don't want to just stop. Envelope filter that I just have set differently for different songs. Like I use it a lot of the older stuff, like songs from Science, compressor, sustainer. I use that make something last longer, or I want the sound to be bigger. You can adjust the tone with it. That's really useful. I got a Holy Grail reverb in there. Sorry, that's the one I was missing. I already failed the quiz. Um, <laughs> you know, I just use them for different things. A lot of times. I use Boss for like a really short slap delay. The Holy Grail, I just like the way it colors the sound. And I use it a lot. I leave it on a lot of the time. And a stereo chorus pe pedal, but I only use I only use it in mono, so it's not really stereo. <laughs> I've also got a Phase 90, which I skipped somewhere in there. Oh, yeah. The um, EV. Yeah. My, my old guitar tech, Larry Malero, awesome guitar tech. Um, huge Van Halen fan, you know. So one time he just stuck it on there and... Just you know, just kept just kept it on there. I'm a huge Van Halen fan too, man. It's like how can you not be? Guy just you know, some Michael Jordan of guitarists. Yeah. I've got the I've got a tone driver um, that I use. It's it's only plugged in through my uh, clean channel though. Okay. I don't run that through the dirty amp. Um, that just controls the the um, the overdrive on on how overdriven or how clean my clean channel is. Micro Pog actually is a small version. It's just like a like a multi uh, multi octave harmonizer, yeah. you know. And it's really cool though because it it's sensitive enough, like where it picks up individual chords. I mean individual notes. Sorry, like if you play a major chord, it'll harmonize every note in the chord. During a bunch of the guitar solos, like in Six Sad Little World, I throw it in there. Um, one of our newer songs called Promises. Um, during the guitar solo section of that, I I use it there. It's pretty like prominent, and I actually also use it as kind of like a 12-string simulator. I guess like I kind of turn it on at like a low level when we play the song Love Hurts. Just kind of imitates a 12-string guitar octave pedal. I use that a lot too, um, like in the song uh, in the Company of Wolves, one of our newer songs. Um, I use that in in there, and those are the, yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> that's the whole pedal board. To clarify, if you haven't already, for the people that you've gone through your pedal board and told us your signal is for your overdrive, it's very distinct. Like, what's your you know? Do you have a certain pedal that you use, or is it mostly coming for the amp? The overdriven sounds that I'm using now live are are just coming from the. Um, from the Mesa amps, okay. from the 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 high gain, you know, the modern gain setting on the um, on the combo amps, it's like, you know, they're 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 awesome. You can really get them to sound kind of any way you want. I learned about those amps actually um, when I was a teenager, um, and I worked in a recording studio, and a bunch of guys would bring those amps in there and play, and I was just was like, wow, these are amazing. <laughs> you know, they sound so good and. They're so heavy, you know, they're such yeah. like, 
they're just these really like you know you look in the back and there's so many tubes in there you know it's like I was just totally wowed by that when I was a kid, you know. That's the kind of thing where you're, you know, you're a kid, and you look at amp, you're like, whoa, look at all those tubes, man. It must be, it must be heavy. <laughs> but I, I really love the way that those amps sounded, and um, and they sounded great, you know, recorded, you know. So that was like one of those things where, as a young musician, being able to work in a studio and see the way that people use the amps, and the the big challenge was, you know getting the money to buy one of those amps because yeah. those are expensive amplifiers. Yeah. They just are. And uh, I actually, like, you know, I was really fortunate to to link up with uh, TN from Mesa Boogie like a long time ago. He was very gracious with um, letting me use a gear and stuff like that. So very, very thankful for all that. General group of a pedal, like if it's a delay or a reverb or something, what would be that one pedal that you need to have? I'm a big fan of delay effects. I just always have been. And I feel like you can do so much with with delays and you really can use them to color your sound so many ways. Um, you know, or you can set them, you know, with like long delay rates or de decay rates and play along with them and stuff. It's just like, it's, it's like having accompaniment you know if you're yeah. playing by yourself you can kind of play along with it and create all kinds of textures you can do volume swells and they they fade out in interesting ways and you can make chords decay out over each other and create you know different different tonalities and stuff it, it's really great thank you very much yeah, no problem. Hi, man. this is chris keys for premiereguitar.com